What's up, people, and welcome to another episode of Developer Habits. My name is Ketmar. I'm a full stack engineer from Estonia. And today we are interviewing Francesco, who I guess doesn't need an introduction for many of you. He's a <laughs> he's like everywhere in Twitter, in YouTube, and he's been super helpful in the community. And I'm not gonna do a long intro so Francesco can introduce himself but I just yeah. want to say that he's one of those people in the community that, that I'm like really following and he's like really motivating and what's special about him at least from my perspective is that he's conducted almost 100 interviews with other popular uh, names in YouTube like Florian Pop, Adrian Twarog and WebDev Simplified and I also recently watched his episode with Chris Chris Hsu, the founder of scotch.io and yeah if you want to learn more about other great results then go to Francesco's Francesco's YouTube channel but yeah hey Francesco how are hey, you hey Ket, Ketmar I don't know if I've pronounced your name well Ketmar but yeah, uh, thank well. you thank you so much for this introduction really it's it's already warming my heart uh, yeah but uh, I, I try to help people and my my aim with my interviews I make 100 in 100 days is to let people let people know that developers are not just coders like in a corner with a with a black hoodie but I don't I don't have today the black hoodie otherwise it could have been a good thing but uh, uh, I want to show that developers are people we have other interests we need to exercise we need to stay fit we need to have other things to to think about not just coding and solving bugs and copy pasting code from stack overflow all day long yeah yeah, so, uh, it seems like we are aiming to do the similar thing. Like uh, <laughs> my YouTube channel name is Developer Habits and basically to promote right. the same ideas that it's not just about the technical skills. But what what I've noticed, in, in your, especially in your Twitter, is that most of the times when I log in, I can already see some of your motivating posts and I'm, I'm like super pumped. And I remember the last time when I asked about... Um, a habit that helps you to become a better developer. You also mentioned mm. like working out and, uh, you know, taking care of your body. So it's it's really good to see that there are other people promoting those kind of ideas. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And uh, I come from the sport world. I've been a volleyball coach for almost 20 years. So this is my background. I have this uh, really in my veins. Uh, so even if now I am a developer full, uh, full time, let's say, okay, I've, li I've left my job, but we, this is another story. But even if I code uh, all day long, uh, it's important for me yeah, to work, especially in the morning. But you, you can have, uh, you can also exercise uh, in the evening if you want to, to well, quit the stress. Uh, but uh, you should do this because uh, it's useful. And even if you don't solve a bug, at least you have, uh, yeah, it's good for your body. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I guess you've also been in the situation where you're like, uh, I can't solve this technical problem. I go out, I, I don't know, go jogging or something, come back and. <sighs> yeah, but uh, I can say that uh, some of my best ideas, they came out from working and running in the morning. The interview series. It's, uh, yeah, I, I thought about that uh, while I was working in the morning because I made one. Then by working, say, okay, yeah, you have other friends that I want to call and I talk with. I want to practice English because my English is still bad, but before it was even worse. And uh, then I think, okay, I can do this. And then after uh, two weeks, I've decided, okay, I can do this for 100 days. But uh, it was uh, a process. It, it, it was not a plan. Uh, if you see the very first one, it's just me like uh, sitting like this uh, and talking with Adrian Tuareg. So, so uh, now at least I am uh, in the front of a camera. It's different. But uh, yeah, some of my best ideas. So they come. Also, my, by starting my YouTube channel, yeah, I made my very first uh, videos are running videos. So mm -hmm. uh, it's all about uh, that, yeah. Yeah. This is actually um, the language, the language thing. The, the, we both are not native English speakers, so my question maybe would be like, how mm, how much effort do you put into like consciously improving your English, or how do you see yourself when you have to talk to native speakers? 
Yeah, I think this is one of my, it has been one of my biggest problem because I wanted to start YouTube like uh, eight or uh, 10 years ago. I bought a, a camera, but I could not uh, use that because uh, I really felt so bad with my English. Uh, it's, I repeat, it's still bad, but uh, um, if, uh, I think that as a native speaker, we have uh, maybe more problems uh, in our mind that... Uh, than the real one ones because uh, for example I um, I can say this is something strange that uh, I had to made eleven videos on YouTube to start uh, actually talking in front of a camera like for four, five seconds because I just recording myself running some good music in, in the background but uh, it was really a problem for me and it took me like I don't know like. Uh, 30 shots uh, to record a five seconds video. And in the end, I remember the GoPro just uh, died because of the battery. Otherwise, I think I, 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 sh I could be still there, <laughs> still trying. And, but I think that uh, we can start, even if you are not an IDT speaker, uh, maybe with something really simple, just some seconds, uh, and then get the feedbacks. Some people could also like our accent. For example, I got so, a lot of people uh, in the comments. They said, oh, I like your Italian accent. I try to hide that, but I don't think that that's possible. Uh, yeah, uh, this could. I also, for example, I don't know if you know Maximilian Schwarzmuller, who made a lot of uh, video, a lot of videos on Udemy. She has a, a strong German accent, at least in the beginning. But this is his style, and there is nothing wrong with that. After a while, also, you, you could also like that. Mm -hmm. And also, I, also, I can see that I really like your accent also. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you actually brought out an interesting point I hadn't thought about before, that um, your accent can actually become part of your brand. Yeah. And that would also, um, like, native English speaker listeners could comment, like, how do you see, um, like, uh, foreign people talking in English? It'd be, it'd be interesting yeah. to hear about that. But in the end, I guess, like for both of us, it's like a journey we have taken on. And uh, by creating videos, we get better and better and better. Yeah. And also, I think that, uh, for example, maybe a native speaker could uh, uh, listen to all our errors. But for example, if you are talking to another non-native speaker, for example, I understand you perfectly. So it's not a problem for me. So, yeah. it's uh, And yeah, and with practice, for example, I... I I've always thought that I, I would have done uh, my YouTube channel in English. I don't know why. Maybe this is because uh, so by making uh, English videos, I can improve my English. So, for example, because uh, I've read many books uh, in English, also technical. I've watched uh, countless uh, videos uh, on YouTube in English, but the practice uh, of talking or uh, speaking in English, uh, yeah. This is something that I did uh, just uh, on October, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I don't know how is it with you, but I was just interviewed in this Estonian, uh, Estonian uh, technolo technology podcast, and mm -hmm. I found it really hard to speak Estonian technical words because I, like I all the, everything I learn is in English. I don't know. I don't know. I've never, for example, uh, um, I don't know if I'll do something in, in Italian. I, I just, uh, in just one Italian community, the, other, uh, the others are just English. It could be funny, maybe strange for me, <laughs> yeah, to talk in Italian in some uh, somewhere. But uh, yeah, it's strange, it's strange, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But okay, um, actually, like Francesco, as I said before, you you at least it seems to me you are so active in the community, and now you mm -hmm. just uh, recently actually quit your daily job and became a consultant and also. Uh, you want to put even more effort into this community for it. So maybe you can talk about your journey. Um, like how did you become a developer and what's your full journey been, been like? Yeah, yeah. And, and this is my, my favorite uh, question when I do my interviews. So it's strange to answer to this exact question because this is usually my, my opening, que opening uh, question. Um I became a developer because I, I've been a computer science uh, uh, student. And while doing that, uh, I felt in love uh, with coding. Uh, and then I started coding uh, all the long. I, this was uh, like uh, 2015. 
Before doing that, uh, I coding sometimes. I made some sites, uh, but uh, not, it was more a hobby for me. My main job was the, the yeah the volleyball coach, uh, coach uh, something like that. Um, but after a while, I really felt in love with coding. Uh, and even if I was uh, not uh, uh, social, because I started in 2020, I started with the Unity 3D, so C Sharp, and then uh, Java, Java Backend. Then I felt in love with the JavaScript and Node, of course. Uh, and when I discovered the Docker, it was really, yeah, really uh, <laughs> the the truth, the true love. I hope that my girlfriend uh, we, we, will not uh, will not see this, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. But anyway, and then uh, I got this uh, offer to um, to work for the European Space Agency because uh, let's say that I, I had in 2017 this idea to just become a consultant and freelancer, but then uh, I got this really great offer, so I decided to to get that because also. In my opinion, uh, a full-time job uh, is not a bad thing. A lot, I know that a lot of people, they say that it's just a bad, you should uh, pursue your dreams. I, I am a, one of them. But I want to say that there's, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have a honest job, uh, you have uh, my respect, uh, my admiration anyway. And also, uh, it's more about uh, the mindset. So you can have a full-time job, and then you can work on yourself. Uh, you can uh, try to... Uh, and full-time jobs have just uh, some uh, advantages because they, take, they give you more stability, more time to think about your own things. Uh, you just don't should not get stuck, of course, if you have uh, a dream of doing something else. So... Uh, I decided to accept this job. I made this for three years and a half. Now uh, and now I, I, I j I'm just coming back on my original plan, which is just to work on my own, uh, find some clients. Uh, I got uh, almost uh, 50 offers, three offers already. So these days are a bit crazy for me. I also got some offers from some of my relatives, uh, which is kind of strange for me now because I know them and they just contacted me. And and that's it. So I'm really enjoying. It. I'm really happy uh, with that. Uh, thank you for all the all your kind words. Uh, it's the best way to start this Friday. So yeah, <laughs> it's amazing to hear your story, uh, especially from the perspective that you initially already had this idea that okay, I want to become a consultant and I want to become uh, you know basically be in charge of my own time, as I understand. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can discuss more about this daily job versus consultant life. Mm. Because uh, I also, I have a background before I joined a like daily job or professional web development job, I was freelancing. But uh, I felt that when I was doing things alone or like smaller projects, I felt like I'm really smart. I can do everything. But once I went to like uh, this professional job i felt like okay there are so many things i don't know and uh, i've i've seen this daily job as something where i could um, go into really technical things yeah but i think that it's not about you that you are not good i think that, that when you work for a full-time company they have uh, their habits they have uh, something that you need to know about them maybe they need something i don't know some network specific things so of course, there is something that you don't know about that, but it's not about you or me. It's just because the company has some specific requirements, and you need and you need to adapt to what they do. So, yeah. So, in my opinion, it's not you, but uh, yeah, you need to adapt to their needing. Uh, mm -hmm. But you are good, in my opinion. And since I'm the biggest, then they're they're great. But uh, what what do you think about? Um like now that you are working alone mm -hmm. uh what are your plans or uh, regarding my, that yeah my my plans for uh my original plans was really to like uh, take a holiday for 6 months but uh, maybe i need to change that plan because i need i, I got so, too many offers so maybe i'll delay the, the holidays and now i also remember that we are in covid times uh, we are in lockdown now in Italy, so I can't even go to my girlfriend's house now. So I need to change this plan. My plan now is to understand all the offers, take the best ones, also the, the best offers that uh, not about just money, but also will also help me to improve 
find other clients in the future. So it's not about only that, uh, but about, uh, yeah, to choose the right one. So this is also why I'm reading them one by one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that I am a really in a really good period now because uh, I got people offering me things. Uh, I need to choose my path. So mm-hmm. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I need to, to say that uh, it has been a little bit uh, scary to, to quit my job, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm already happy just uh, yeah, <laughs> one week later. And I'm still working full time until the 31st of March. So I'm still working full time, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, this will end in uh, 31st of March. Okay. Actually, you, you brought up an interesting thing, actually, like the decision of the final, making the final decision of that, okay, I'm now going to quit my job and I'm going to uh, become uh, a boss of my own, basically. So what were to you the things that you had to consider before making that decision? Uh, the things are because you need to choose uh, maybe between the safety and uh, safety, but maybe, I don't know, uh, I need to do something that really interests me. So, uh, uh, so I, especially in computer science coding, sometimes it can be a little bit boring. Uh, I talk about me, of course, but uh, I really wanted to do something on my own. And I also, I think that in the future, if I have some problems or if I don't like that, uh, this will be hard. Uh, I can also, yeah, find another full-time job. It's not about. Uh, that uh, I'm not saying that I will never work as a, as a full-time job uh, ever because uh, it's useless uh, to make to make these sort of statements. Uh, some, so some someone in the future will say, "Ah, you had said that uh, you uh, would have never." So I prefer to not say this. It depends on the offer, for example. For example, even in 2017, I said I will never uh, maybe take a full-time job, and uh, one month later, I got this uh, super good offer. So I decided to accept that, but. Uh, yeah, but the most important thing is that you should have, yeah, as I said, uh, uh, a strong m- mindset because uh, uh, maybe if you work full time, you can maybe get really too too much, maybe comfortable, too much relaxed. Uh, so maybe that's the most risky thing. So it's safe for the money that you pay check. And I think that um, for this kind of job, uh, uh, developer, it's important to stay updated, stay, stay curious. I, for example, I have never stopped to learn. For example, I have learned Docker while I was working uh, there, but we, we we were not using that. I, I, I studied that on my own. So it's important to keep studying, keep working, uh, have your side projects, uh, even if you have a full time. If you want to improve, of course, there's nothing wrong. If if you want, if you are different from me and you want just code for money, and then you want to uh, running or play guitar in the weekend, uh, totally fine with me. So, yeah, I guess uh, that, that's a, that's a really nice thing, actually, because um, <clears throat> as a developer, and especially if you are ha- if you have this daily job, then you can basically choose if uh, if you want to have side projects and you want to go, you know, expand even further your knowledge. But even if you don't, you you are still working at least eight hours a day and w- okay. learning about technologies. It's just that this. Uh, there are so many things one can learn and in the end you cannot learn everything so it's completely okay to not do extra work and just uh, spend time on your own hobbies or interests no, exactly 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 yeah 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 it's really a pleasure to talk with you yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I already feel you like a friend yeah yeah it's, uh, it's great yeah yeah, I mean, I mean we we're doing really similar things. So, um, like I remember when I was writing to you, and I've, I've written to you even before, and you've been super helpful. Like uh, I remember you wrote to me like, if you have any questions, then just let me know. And I'm like, okay, th- this guy is so so friendly and helpful. I'm like, yeah, some, yes, sometimes it's hard to reply to everyone. <laughs> it's hard, but uh, no, but uh, I like uh, yeah. I'd re- For example, I can say that now. I think I can be a consultant, a freelancer for a period of time, but it will be great maybe in the future to dedicate even more time because uh, I can see that I, I, uh, I started, it's strange because I started uh, um, creating content to give back to, com- to the community of developers, but the more I create content, the more the community g- give back to me. So it's impossible. I always feel in depth 
with that uh, but uh, yeah but I don't know but I'm really like I found this and I can see that for example I also find uh, some offers uh, uh, of jobs on Twitter so yeah yeah so in the future there will be could also be some some announcement that I can do them sorry for that Katmar but uh, maybe soon we can do I'll do some big announcement yeah so I was uh, at the right place uh, at the right time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost, yeah. But uh, I, I, I still have some uh, questions about the consultation part of now. Course. Like from your point of view, let's say a, a be someone who hasn't coded before goes to a boot camp and now they uh, want to start consulting right away. <laughs> Do you think you need some kind of prior knowledge, or is it uh, something you can start right away and learn on the go the consultation? I think that you can start, even if you don't have a uh, big knowledge, but maybe start with something small. For example, now I'm trying to have uh, to find maybe some even small consultant uh, jobs. Maybe I, I have some big offers, but uh, I'm I'm more about uh, to find some clients. So maybe I don't know. Maybe even if you do some static page, so something very simple. It's more about you creating the mindset. Uh, finding some clients so maybe don't don't find maybe some clients that are bigger than your possibility because you can i don't know you can try maybe you know, to outsource outsource something you can be in trouble so i would like my advice uh, be just to start very super simple try to see if you like that and if you like that you can yeah build upon on that uh, uh, yeah uh, the um, Computer science web development is good because you can always build again. If you have created a static website and you have another offer, you don't start from scratch. So you start from a point and then you start building on top of that. So it's important for, in my opinion, to create some basic that you can build upon uh, upon that. And uh, you don't need to be an expert. Yeah, you, 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 you will become an expert by doing that. You, yeah, it's about yeah. that. I I I, told, I totally agree here, and especially uh, like mm, as a, as a freelancer, for example, when I have a new client coming in and I don't know everything, I still know that okay, these are I don't know X Y Z technologies, and I have some kind of boilerplate ready for myself to start on. Yeah, so it's it's a really nice tip. Yeah, but yeah, but in my opinion, this is not cheating at all. I think it also the client could get the, the benefits because if you don't if you create something that it's already tested that it's working it's good for them. Yeah. So it's not, uh, yeah, you can do the job uh, easier. You can work on something else. There is always something to work on. So it's not yeah. a problem that you will not find the the, the, the job or the work. But uh, if I if I if I will be uh, one of your uh, clients. I would be happy if you create something that you already know that it's working. It's, 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 I will not go mad. I will not ask for a discount because uh, you already have some code because the code itself, uh, it's useless because it needs to be adapted to my needing. So it's good if you have, already have that, but uh, you you have worked on that. So Yeah. yeah. I, I, again, amazing point uh, to all the listeners there, like uh, that... And then the client cares about the value that they get in order to build their business. Like, and even re uh, I've seen people sometimes asking community, like, should I learn React or Vue in the beginning? But uh, for example, if you want to build front end systems, but in the end, uh, your clients usually do not care that much. They just want the working piece of software that brings value. Yeah, they, they don't give an, an F. I can swear, but uh, you understood me. <laughs> Yeah, I can say something. Let, let me promote a little bit, like for five seconds. Uh, next Friday, I'll try view for the first time on my channel live. On the first time, I have zero experience. I'll have uh, uh, maybe someone will help me, so uh, he will watch me, and I'll try to view from from zero. So I go on the official page uh, because I've already done this with Flutter with Tadas Petra. And we really enjoyed this so much to try something new from zero. 
that I want to do this uh, on view. I don't know if you are you a fan of you or not. So yeah, I love, I, so, I love so, you. I love you. Okay, so yeah, so uh, I, I I wait for you on my channel uh, if we try to organize that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I will, I will be there. And uh, yeah. again, uh, just a shout out to you that if you want to learn how a professional uh, to the listeners, if you want to see how professional developers learn new technologies, then again, Francesco's channel is a good example where you. Yeah you learn from the very scratch something new with others. Yeah, yeah for example, I like this format because, uh, first of all, I, need, I don't need to edit, and this is a good thing for me. <laughs> so I am just coding, I just laugh, I interact with people in the chat. So, for example, I like this. Uh, maybe I, I'll need to find a name, I don't know, like uh, Francesco tries uh, things, uh, something like that. Uh, this could be a series because uh, there are so many technologies that I'd like to try, and maybe by doing this on live stream, this can also be good for my channel. Could be good also for someone else because, for example, when you do this, uh, uh, you will find some problems. Uh, I've I've solved the Java path problem on Windows Live, so I, re I really feel like like a god now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but this is good. Uh, yeah, also because if you have some problems, if you someone will, will watch your videos, this could be great. So I don't know. This will be fun. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's I believe it's important to show that even professional developers they they google around and they ask questions and they need to find bugs in their code and so on. So, of course, of course. Uh, it's a great uh, initiative. Yeah, yeah. I've seen someone on Twitter uh, on some once uh, they he said uh, you are a senior developer when you don't need to google uh, no more. So I say, okay, no, no, okay, nobody is a senior developer then. Okay, we can remove the title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to mute my microphone because I'm laughing. <laughs> It's a problem with that. Yeah, for, it's, it, for example, I like the, the the microphone put like that because you can mute that. Here is hard to mute, so I think that you will hear all my laugh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I just love it. But as we are already talking about the YouTube part, maybe uh, let's let's move to your um, your I don't know how to say it achievements or your progress. Uh, for example, you have almost done one hundred interviews with other creators, and I, I I just find it amazing. Like, how have you done it? Uh, what have you learned from other people and how do you even like, find people to interview? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Katman. This is a great uh, question. Uh, let's say that, first of all, I started without thinking about these 100 interviews in 100 days. So this was the challenge. I started from making one, then another one, then another one, and another one. I recorded like uh, 40 interviews like uh, in two weeks, something like that. So I had already too many uh, of them because I got, so, I got so many friends who I wanted to talk with. And this has been really a great, uh, this has been great for me, for my channel, for my friends. Uh, so we, we all uh, uh, won basically. So... I've been really happy to do this. Uh, now I also, I, I, um, the best part for me was that I have created some stronger connections with people because I think, yeah, Twitter, other socials, Facebook, they are good, but sometimes they tend to create some weak connections. Like, okay, I have uh, more 100 more followers. Okay, but if I don't know them, it's a bit pointless, in my opinion. So it's not about just the numbers. Maybe it could be, it could be good for your ego. Okay, I have 1,000 more followers. But if you don't know them, for example, now we are trying to create a stronger connection between me and you. Maybe we were already following each other. But once you talk with them, even if it's just 20 minutes or half an hour, after this uh, call, if you make a tweet, uh, I can read your tweet with your voice. Uh, if, if I send you a message or you send me a message, we can interact in a different way. So this is what, and I, I started to notice that, that uh, once I've done an interview with someone, if I send a message like, I don't know, can you help me with this and that? Uh, usually I get a reply. You know, I hope that I'll do this also with you after, after this one. So this was the part that uh, I really enjoyed the most. And also, yeah, I started also, yeah, to learn about uh, the journey. So, uh, let's say that I really like to listen to people. This is also why uh, I've done this. So I like to listen to people's stories. Uh, 
uh, how they become successful. I've seen that they have, they have become successful in so different ways. And they got also some super strange backgrounds. I got uh, an opera singer, um, makeup artist. Uh, so, so really strange, uh, strange backgrounds. Uh, but uh, yeah, and you are, maybe you asked me uh, something about that, about uh, these uh, 100 uh, interviews, what I can say. Maybe one thing that I can say is that uh, uh, not everything works for everyone. So you should really find your path. Uh, for example, you have, you have mentioned the web dev simplified for before. Web dev simplified uh, barely uses Instagram, for example. So you don't need to an Instagram account to be super successful on YouTube. Then it's Ivy also. You barely use the Twitter and Instagram. So maybe the opposite. I've seen that people that just use YouTube or just use one social very, very well, they are maybe more successful if they use them that in the proper way. I got a lot of people, for example, they tried, they struggled on Twitch for two years. Then they posted one video on YouTube and they just exploded. So sometimes it's about the media that you choose. So if you uh, one video on one format on Twitch uh, could work way different on YouTube uh, or Twitter. So uh, it's about creating maybe the also the the format that really the best fits for you. For example, I've discovered that I really like uh, YouTube. If you told me something like that one year ago, probably I would not be here. I would have said no. I'm too busy. I can't accept your interview because I was too shy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really like what you said about, uh, you know, connecting with people during those interviews and actually putting an actual person behind those accounts. And uh, did it, basically, as I understand, it's like becoming friends uh, in public. Exactly. Exactly. And also, as a I like Twitter, uh, but sometimes uh, the social platform, they tend just to, I call this like the, the social game. So they try to, you try to get more likes, get more comments, get more retweets. Instead, like this, we are doing something maybe more natural, more human maybe. So uh, this, is, this is what I like, for example, of doing this kind of uh, interviews, uh, podcast, uh, video call, how do you want to call them? Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, like when I when I look at your channel and I see how active you are, and <laughs> especially you're like even now when we are talking, you seem super passionate about everything that you do. So Thank I'm you. just gonna shift uh, to the topic of your habits and mindset that you have. Hmm. Like uh, how how do you how do you um, motivate yourself and push yourself to continue uh, putting the content out there? Mm, it's okay uh, for example one thing that I do is when I, I, th I feel that I lack some motivation I post uh, some uh, motivational tweet so for example if you uh, it's strange because uh, you can think that uh, I am I don't know like a superhero super motivator so I, I do this just for you but it's not about that when I post something uh, motivational it's also for me usually when I walk if I want to do something Something uh, I try to never, for example, to um, to post a motivational uh, tweet if I don't feel that. I usually I post that when I feel that. So when I don't feel that, uh, I just close Twitter and that's it. And off. When I I feel that I can be useful for someone else, I post that. Uh, if someone likes that or comment that, I'm happy. Otherwise, uh, no problem. But. Uh, this, is, for example, is one of the things that I do. So if you if you see one of my motivational posts, I am one of the people that maybe needed to read that. So I do that for you and also for me. Um, yeah, I think it's important to also find the, the, the purpose. So what you want to do. So if you, for example, if you want to be to, if you want more freedom, this could motivate you to create more content, uh, to find other ways, uh, to experiment new things. Uh, Sometimes it's hard 
Well, for example, one thing that also uh, worked for me, it has been like uh, doing this as a challenge because uh, I come uh, from the sports world that I don't want to lose a challenge. So if I say that I do something, I'll put uh, all my efforts uh, into that. Uh, so I don't want to lose when I say something and then I do this. For example, I can see that the last 20, I was a bit tired, but I, I wanted to finish the the whole, the whole series and something like that. But I I still do this weekly and I think that I also publish your interview maybe soon. But uh, for now, I found the, the balance on that and I'm happy with that. Yeah. These are, uh, <laughs> I keep saying it, but, but I mean, you brought out so many interesting and interesting points, especially um, regarding um, posting those motivation quotes, for example. Um, it's something that I felt with my own uh, channel also, that I, that I do it sometimes for myself yeah. to, to kind of analyze my own experiences and learn new subjects by my own. And the byproducts of doing it publicly is that I can also help others. So it's like a, a really strong connection between those two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's about that. Uh, yeah, for me, it's that uh, not about gain. For me, it's not about gaining followers uh, or gaining likes, uh, but it's about uh, yeah to also also motivate me and maybe someone else uh, and also find people who thinks like like me or they like who, what I say and that's it. Yeah. Uh, you already mentioned the uh, that you sometimes those challenges are your motivation. Let's say you need you have only twenty videos uh, to do out of one hundred, and this is your motivation. I'm almost there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it, it's once you reach that it's better to end the, than to stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The no return point. I don't know. How to, I don't know how to say this in English, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, the point when it's better to to end a journey than coming back. Basically, this is important an important uh, point to reach. Yeah, uh, I I totally agree. But how how do you cope with those times when you are those real down times when you don't have a motivation and you're like super tired? Uh, <clears throat> Usually, the, a good point is to work out, exercise, uh, maybe take a break before you need maybe a one month or three weeks uh, break. So, for example, when I was 20, now I'm 37, I just went uh, all, the, all, yeah, uh, uh, all in until I needed maybe two months uh, maybe to regain, my, uh, to regain myself. Uh, now I understand that maybe it's better to uh, stop uh, in time. So you stop in time, take maybe an, uh, one day off. For example, I can say that I can say this that maybe could be useful. After the 100 interviews, <clears throat> I wanted to create a video, but I said, no, maybe it's better to take a week of break and then start over again because I started to feel a bit tired about uh, my YouTube channel, my videos. So it, it was better to, uh, yeah, to take me, take that in the long run. So it's better to take a small break instead of keep pursuing that. And then maybe you you really lose all the motivation and then you really just want to stop and close all so it's important to not reach that point, but to stop before that. And then uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, taking one day off. You can also get maybe a very good idea. Take re relax. Uh, yeah, take a walk if you can. If you are not in a, in a lockdown, maybe do also something different. It's important because we are humans. So we need to do something different sometimes because otherwise we get really bored. We tend to live. Uh, so it's important sometimes maybe do, I don't know, sing a song, play a guitar or something just for fun. Yeah, play, play video game. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important to change sometimes, to break your habits sometimes. It's important if you find that they are not uh, useful for you. Yeah. It's important to find the balance. I know that, I know that this is a proverb, uh, something, uh, yeah, obvious, but uh, it, for me, it works. It works now. Uh, now it's better than uh, ten years ago when I just uh, went all day uh, all day long and then uh, needed to stop for a longer time. So small breaks. Uh, amazing advice. I mean, like as a, as a developer, it's really easy to kind of uh, 
dig into those problems and just you know keep going keep going keep going but in the end as you said it's important to also take breaks and uh, think about yourself yeah yeah and so yeah and sometimes also, yeah also for solving bugs if you take a break uh, take a walk uh, it happens to me that i uh, i had some problems then i went for a walk running while i was walking i figured out the problem I turned back and running back home to solve that problem <laughs> before I forget that. I forgot that. And that uh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, can, I can imagine you like, oh, I know the solution. Running back home quickly. Yeah. Some people say, oh, that, that person is really trying hard or running. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of just coming, well, wanting to come back home to solve that bug. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I guess the, this is, this is a really nice uh, place to start concluding conclude drawing conclusions to our uh, conversation. So we've spoken about, spoken about many things. Your your uh, journey to becoming a developer uh, now that you're a consult consult and also really active in the community. So I have one last question to you. What would be your advice to other developers to uh, to kind of level up? If you are a junior, how to level up to mid level? If you are already a mid level, how to improve to the senior level? Okay. Yeah, my advice is to don't stress too much. Uh, try to be in the best condition to do something else. Uh, don't feel overwhelmed because this world is too big. It's too huge. I've tried also to learn everything. It's impossible because all the frameworks, all the Vue.js team, the Angular team, the React team, they are working while you are, you are trying to learn them every day. So you can't keep it up with all the frameworks because it's not something that you can just learn because uh, uh, these frameworks are alive they they put out there because if I don't know if I want to be I don't know like an expert in films, you can just you know watch them all and then you know everything. With uh, coding is not like that. <clears throat> Sorry, because uh, you need to stay updated every week or every day on each of them. So it's impossible to stay up with all of them because you are one. You have a uh, uh, whole uh, teams uh, against you that are against. Uh, I'm joking. But they are trying to improve their product every day, Flutter, Docker. So you should focus on something and then trying to stay updated maybe on just one, two, maybe three. It depends, of course, on your needings, if you have a family, if you have a dog, animals. Uh, yeah, for example, I don't have uh, uh, children. I don't have dogs or cats here. So for me, for example, it's easy. For me, uh, uh, developers who are also parents are superheroes. So it depends on your needs. Uh, on, but uh, yeah, you should never feel stressed uh, or feel that you're not good enough. Uh, you just do what you can every day. And uh, then you will see that people will start following you. There will always be some newer developer. People will want to try something new. You can be useful for them. And you and you start learning also by watching other videos, other tutorials. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, I I caught myself listening, and uh, yeah. I I totally agree with you, Francesco. Yeah. I, I am super, super thankful that you agreed to do this interview. Yeah. And I hope you too enjoyed it. I hope all the listeners enjoyed it. And what else can I say? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And please uh, like this video and subscribe to Katamar uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. other way around, if you want to learn more about Francesco and uh, follow his journey, he's active in Twitter and also in YouTube. So go check him out. He's an awesome guy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Too many compliments, <laughs> Katamar. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, people, for listening, for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.